breakdown. Never fade by this wildlife. This is the Long Beach Duo's fifth studio album, self-released on the 23rd of June. Never Fade consists of eight tracks, clocks in at around 29 minutes, and is the much-anticipated follow-up to 2021's Ever Blossom LP. Um, real quick before we really jump into like how we felt about the songs and all that, yeah, I wanted to lead with something that uh, this band's vocalist uh, and one of the members, Kevin Jordan, shared. Never Fade, this is quote, Never Fade is our second independently produced and released album. We assembled the emo Avengers for this one with a special guest vocalist on all eight tracks. No love songs this time around. All heartbreakers. End quote. <laughs> it's so fucking funny reading that quote now because he's so right. There is absolutely zero joy to be found on this road. There is no not depressive episode to be found throughout the entirety of this record. I, I think track seven is, is like the vibes are good on track seven. You think so? Huh? Yeah. So, um, how did you, I'm trying to remember, did you vibe with ever blossom? I, I feel like I've really, really enjoyed every release from this wildlife. Um, just because this wildlife are sort of and and this applies when this band first came onto the scene yeah. and all the way up until now I'm with you they're in their own lane nobody's like them nobody's doing this like style of kind of like two guy indie rock in this scene so every time it comes around uh it's it's one of those things where like oh yeah yeah no I've I have I can get a fill for this. Like, right. I, Where I, else am I going to get this fixed? Right. Um, and, and one of my favorite things about this band is I think that they could have easily pivoted more towards like traditional pop punk or whatever. I think yeah. that they absolutely have those parts. But I really, I almost like I just really appreciate the how committed they are to this specific sound. And this like, is we talked them. about right. And there's no real other band exactly like this one. Yeah. So I really, I like that they've stuck it out with the sound. And I think that really, they just do get better over time. I think ever blossom was a really solid record. It has maybe like my favorite, that fucking whistle song might be my favorite one by this. Oh, band I general. fucking, the I way I remember the name of it off the top of my nobody head. Nobody, uh, if you're cool with being through, I'm cool with you or something like something that. Like yeah, that. yeah. Um, if you're good with, okay, whatever. I'm not even going to sure. try. Um, the, when this band fucking whistles, you know it's over. Like, it's when this over. band fucking whistles, because there's a whistle that yeah. shows up in the second track out here, Proximity, <laughs> with uh, Rory Rodriguez of Dayseeker. And, like, it is this band's secret weapon. Like, the second you hear, like, a... You know it's fucking over. You <laughs> know you it's whistle? fucking over. I can know. I actually can whistle? whistle? Yeah, I just didn't want to. I don't know. You didn't want to like blow. The you know what I mean? Speakers? Yeah, yeah, I just didn't know if people would be into that. Um, I I really like the. Uh, I, I don't like the word gimmick, but I like that. Like, the whole emo Avengers, uh, like, the approach on this album, I really enjoy. Because it makes every song sort of its own event. Yeah, a hundred percent. It makes the whole album an event. Yeah. Like I was so much more excited for this when I saw their track listing with all the names like blanked out, like who the features would be. I was like, oh, okay. Now, now we're doing something interesting. And it's like I would have been totally cool with just getting another this wildlife album. I loved fucking Ever Blossom. I loved Petaluma. Um, but like, hey, this is a neat fucking fun way to shake it up. And I think it really paid off for them, honestly, because I think that. In a way that's almost unavoidable, the features are the sell when it comes to this record. A little record. bit. A little bit. Um, you want to do a feature power ranking? I almost don't know how to approach this. <laughs> are we supposed to, like, compare the features to, like, who who is Rory Rodriguez's Avenger equivalent? 
That's a good question. Or is it a song equivalent? Like, you know what I mean? Rory Rodriguez, he's a bit of a he's a bit of a rocket raccoon to me. A bit of a rocket raccoon. He's, there's <laughs> like see. there's like a there's like an a sadness that's forever sure. attached to that character. You haven't seen the third Guardians. There's of the a Galaxy. tragedy. Shut the fuck up. That is implied in the trailer for Guardians <laughs> 3 that I'm picking up on. Let's assign him. Brian Burkheiser is Captain America. Let's not even play. Joshua Roberts? Yeah. Iron Man. Okay. Okay. Iron Man. Ryan. Or just that, that, that energy we come into that track on. How'd you forget us? Come on. Ryan Key? Hmm. He's got to be one of the older Avengers. He's got to be one of the old because he's been around for a while now. Is there like Hawkeye? Haw yeah, all right. I'm a gift ride key Hawkeye. Yeah. Uh, Aaron Marsh also. He's got. He can throw back with. He's uh. He's been around for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Captain Marvel. Um. Andrew Wade. Who's Andrew Wade? Am I, I'm less familiar with Andrew. A, do I not know who Andrew Wade is? Andrew Wade. I feel like Andrew Wade is like the producer. Like I feel like Andrew Wade is a producer. Right. Am I crazy? Yeah, I think of Andrew Wade the producer. Okay, so Andrew Wade is um he's that guy who dies, uh, who's like in charge of uh he's like second under like Samuel Jackson's character. <laughs> okay. You know, he dies in like Whoa. the first Avengers right. movie. Um Oliver Baxter, Star Lord, <laughs> and Brian Butcher Dr. Thor. Strange, Dr. Bro. Strange. Doctor Strange, yeah, that's correct. Yeah. All right. Well now that we've got this exercise out of our <laughs> system here, how'd you feel about the album overall? I was really happy with it. Strong. Um, it's it's everything that this band promised it would be. It's like, hey, uh we are bring we're breaking out all the big guns, but you're still gonna have a miserable time listening to this album. Because inherently, like that's every this wildlife album. They're all yeah. fucking sad. Uh, the vast majority of them, to be fair. And that's what this band operates at at their finest in 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 those small little details like the the sadness of it all right so yeah there's beauty in, in the sadness there's sure. poignancy and and it's 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 laid out beautifully in their lyric there's some like choice lyrics over the, like the course of this record one of my favorite ones is in uh dead to me the closing track um where i believe the line is something along the lines of uh dust hanging on to a ceiling fan which is such mm -hmm. a like absolutely beautiful metaphor and it's one of those things where it's just like god it's so insanely clever and i can't believe i never heard anybody say this before yep um there's another line about like falling asleep to corpse bride i think that was on knife fight mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. the, the uh the copeland feature. For a knife fight knife fight's a fucking knife to your heart is what that track is um there are some obvious questions here though that need to be answered who who is Who's who walks who feature? walks away with it? Who walks away with it? I think for me it's Do you want to say it at the same time or something? What if we're wrong though? Like what if we don't align on this one? I'm I'm going to go with Joshua Roberts. Oh, we apart. don't align. I just love the the little bit of energy we inject on the back half of How Do You Forget Us? Um just good good just overall like storytelling pretty much a good like i don't know just a strong track overall and then josh comes in and it just puts it over the edge for me that's josh's second great feature of the year by the way because i remember that era was an action song too he absolutely yes. fucking killed it um for me in particular uh oliver baxter shows up and i miss you and rent was due and it was fucking was due. due. And my guy fucking absolutely murders that yeah. track, which saves a little bit of the general complaint I would have about dropping a cover in the middle of this album. So initially I had that same feeling. And then I sort of remembered why the majority of us latched on to this wildlife in the first I know, place. I know. I understand that, like, there are certain bands who we've given, like, permission to well, do this. Well, I say that and I'm like, this this cover itched like an like it was scratching an, a nostalgic itch for me interesting not because it's a cover of a really well-known blink 182 song <laughs> like whatever it's because like i had a chance to reminisce on how i discovered this wildlife and watching that sleepwalking cover uh of the bring me the horizon song and i was just like yeah yeah, I forgot that that's sort of this band's. Well, it's not their bread and, and butter. It's not their mo, but yeah, like right, it's yeah. But like, 
like holy shit when they want to fucking knock stuff like that out of the park they're gonna do it yeah they obviously excel at it which is why you sort of like let them run away with it a little bit um in terms of favorite songs on here though i think there's like can i say one there's so much there's such a perfect marriage between brian butcher from the home team and this band on dead to me that like it's hard to argue against it um really really ended up enjoying silver and gold with the Ryan Key feature from Yellow Card. Ryan Key having a little bit of a renaissance this year. Yeah, I, I think that that song's got like maybe the best chorus on the album. And then Ryan comes in a little later on and really puts it over the edge. Sells too. it. Yeah. He puts it over the. Yeah, okay. I'm with you there. Um, I thought overall, I thought this was cool. You know what I mean? Like, I thought, like, this yeah. is a neat idea. I don't know personally. Like, I'm going to settle somewhere around, like, uh, 3.5. I don't know if it if it quite connected with me the way Everblossom and Petaluma did. But I think that just the overall concept of this and the way that... It was executed, honestly. Right, and the way that it was executed. And, and the fact that, like, the features on here are so choice and they work so well. I, I don't know that this record to me is better than just this wildlife by themselves, which I think says a lot about the talent of that band. But I think this is a neat other way of experiencing this project. Yeah. Like we could have easily gotten the sequel to ever blossom and it just be another like good, uh, this wildlife album. But I like the idea that like we've pivoted a little bit. Um, it, it makes this band slightly more unpredictable in a cool way. Yeah, it like goes now, from like this wildlife to this wildlife and friends, and that just right. feels like a completely different project. And now I'm thinking like, all right, do we do we up the stakes on the next record? Do we go back to to a nor what what we knew as a normal this wildlife record? Mm -hmm. Now there's like a question mark, whereas before there wasn't really like I I mean heading into this one before it got announced, I would have thought like, oh, it's just going to be a standard this wildlife album. You think people would be pissed if mystery. there's like a new record and they're like only three features? What the fuck is this shit? <laughs> <laughs> double it and give it to the next band uh what would you give this overall 3.5 feels right okay all right so yeah. we settled kind of on the same thing here so. yeah listen this isn't gonna this one's not gonna like change the world but i was happy with it yeah i agree <laughs>